Boom Diata. Welcome. Welcome back, guys, to You Won't Hate It, where we talk about life through the lens of pastors at the length of a cigar. My name is Josh. My name is Ryan. I'm Floyd. My name is Boom Diata. I don't think I like the shtick. Okay. Joe's, where he won't say his name. Oh, I thought Aww. you meant the motto of like... I don't think I like it. Do, do you want to be in control, Ryan? That's so unlike you. I feel no like it's not way. a control issue. It's a quality issue. Oh, is it? Is like it? it's a quality of your life. Okay. Hmm. We've right. been meaning to talk to you about it. That's what most of this podcast is going to be about. Well, if, if I never it's about name life decisions. If I never name myself, then I don't really have to worry about my life. I feel like I'm just <laughs> is that how I feel it like works? I'm just checking out of it altogether. At we that just point. had a meeting with somebody about this. Well, Same thing. The last two weeks I've wanted to have the intervention <laughs> sign be able to roll down from the ceiling. Oh, good. I don't know why. Uh, are you guys all smoking the same cigar? I am not. The you and Joe are. Rocky Patel sixty. Yeah, I don't know what I want. What are you smoking, uh, Floyd? I'm smoking an Omar Maduro. Boo. So what are you going to smoke, Ryan? I don't know. I really don't. I'm, I'm torn. Well, that's all the podcast, everybody. Ryan's just going to decide what cigar he's going to smoke. Right. Thanks for being here. That's right. And we're out. I love so, that he's mad that I won't say my name but can't decide about a cigar. It's perfect. It's, it's, you're so far from it. Oh, I was really hoping you just keep hunting. Fun. So what are we doing here, guys? For those, let's say someone is joining this podcast for the very first time. Oh, if Where somebody have you been? If they somebody saw, just got on this podcast, the first thing I'd be like is, "Hi, my name's Joe." If, they like, saw, if they just got, if they on, just got here, that's what I'd say. If I'd, they, I'd say they have good life priorities. They saw four stupid. They saw four goofy guys, and they're <laughs> like, "Hey, why, why'd you back off the stupid? What are these <laughs> doofuses?" <laughs> well, because as we learned from our first podcast, oh, we don't no. say that anymore. Uh, they saw four surprising guys. They, very four surprising. Surpri- surprising. Yeah. What was the other one? It was surprising. It was and one boring. Of them. Surprising boring. and boring. Right. And uncool. That's right. Surprising and uncool. uncool. Boring and uncool. Um, and they're like, "Hey, what are these? What are these guys all about? Did, yeah. you, did you just go from a Cohiba Red to a My Father?" The judge? Le no, it's not the judge. Uh, he's, Bajou. 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 I don't know. he's not smoking the judge. The judge is a, it's a brown or a gold band? Yeah. That's yeah. Not, that's, that's not uh, the problem I have with the judge mainly is ring gauge and taste. Hmm. I mean, that's, so, a, that's a lot. The majority. That's a lot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it the length okay. of it, the length of it's fine. Length it looks great. Length great. Yeah, yeah. It's great. The name's all right. Um, so, yeah, it's obvious if you heard that intro that we are all pastors at First Street Church and... We are okay with cigars. We've talked about this at length. If you don't know, yeah, just why, go back and, go listen, back the, and uh, listen to other episodes. Um, We're not going through that every single time. No, um, but like, what, what, what's, what are we doing here? What's the purpose of this? It's really fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly think uh, I was just processing this with Lisa. Uh, and this is weird. Life, more I, life choices. That's, that's what we're right. talking through. Yeah, her, yeah, I say her name. That's fine. <laughs> but, so I think it's interesting. Is here, here's my challenge with our podcast that doesn't make sense for the rest of the world. Like, the idea that anyone would care what us four dipshits think about the world <laughs> is fascinating to me. Like, because we're pastors. Like, it's kind of like if you had somebody in any other field commenting on anything else. Right. You know what I mean? They're, but you're like, but their field is interesting and unique. And I want to say right now in America today, and I could be wrong on this, there's only 25,000 pastors. I think that's the mm. number. So this, it is, it is interesting is that we do have a field that sounds most like, people... Sounds like 24,000 too many. <laughs> 20, 24? Yeah, dude, we need about 1,000. About 1,000. You need about 1,000. Yeah. And, so, and so what's fascinating to me is, you're right, I had never known a pastor until he became a Christian. So the fact that we are talking about stuff, yeah, we absolutely. really do have kind of a unique perspective on the world. Yeah. And part of that is, is that we're part of this... Uh, you know, faith journey where we're not like movies are from the devil. So we're right. already, that already narrows us down even more in terms of how pastors see the world. Whereas we don't see it's like church and non-church. We just see this is all God's, all, all of this yeah. is part of your faith journey. And we're just commenting on anything uh, from a perspective of living our life where, yeah, God's created all things. God loves all people. This is fun. There's some amazing yeah. stuff here. And the fact that there are, you probably for a lot of people watching this, might not know a single pastor in their life. So yeah. So I think that's really it. It's just the simplicity of our perspective is kind of unique. The topics are common. Yeah. Maybe our perspective is uncommon. And I was, mm-hmm. I was thinking through the, 
it works really well if you're a Christian or a non-Christian. Because if you're a non-Christian, you don't know a pastor. You're like, oh, what th- what's this about? And if you're a Christian, I would bet you that our perspective is different from the majority of pastors that you've met. A hundred percent. The fact that you said bet you. I would bet you because I... Because you bet a lot. I bet a lot. Yeah. Massive debt. It. It's just, yeah. just <laughs> weird. He no, doesn't, he's not good at it either. I'm good. He's <laughs> yeah, really just real bad. bad at this as well. <laughs> It'd be, we'd all forgive it if you're actually That's like, right. you know, good at this, but you're that bad is, at it. So that is, uh, well, I, I don't want to get too serious, but that is an addiction that is so different for me. I actually understand substance abuse. I understand the feeling that you get. Mm. I understand the rush you get from gambling because I you do you get a rush, but it it a gambling addiction is one of the more destructive ones that I've seen, and I know guys yeah. with gambling addictions, and it's it's always weird to me that you walk into a casino and they're like, hey, do you have a gambling problem? And they have the the hotline in the casino, and I'm like, well, that's a weird. It's like your drug dealer being like, do you have a problem yeah. with drugs? It's like, well, yeah, I'm here. I yeah. obviously yeah, have a talk problem to with clearly. this. Yeah. Hi. I know everybody by name who's dealing at every right. table. Yes, I have a problem. But that one is, it's so... It's because it's not about the money. That's the problem. I with, know, that's exactly. the problem with the gambling addiction. Yeah. Is it's, you'll be up $3 million and, and be miserable because yeah. you're looking for a rush. Yeah, you're, it's you're looking, the rush. It's the endorphins. And uh, it's weird because it's just like a chemical addiction. You need more. Yeah. So what started out as a 50 cent home game stops being a rush you yeah. got to go to a dollar a hand you got to go to twenty dollars a hand and at some point you just need to feel that and i just it's so interesting because it it is so destructive yeah that feeling of that you just need more and it's one of the ones that seems like the easiest to just go oh just stop gambling right, right. stop betting right. whereas you kind of think oh the 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 uh substance abuse it's a chemical thing, so that's like, oh, I understand how you get hooked on that. Yeah. What I don't think people understand is that a, a gambling addiction is this. It's a the chemical. It's, 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 chemical. A, yeah. it's yeah. crazy. It's also yeah. the same. Almost, and you talk to anybody in addiction, being ministry, we get to be around a lot of people in addiction because yeah. God usually comes into play, even in AA. And our church, especially, power. is a haven. It really for, is. It really uh, is. Yeah, people they're, in recovery. There, you. It's. Basically, they know how can this dumbass judge me when he's worse than me. So they feel comfortable here. Yeah, right. they're like you're and worse than right. I am. They're right. They are yeah. right. Uh, and so part of this is is all of it is some sort of escapism because you're looking for an endorphin rush because you're having you're having feelings you don't want to deal with. So you want to feel good about something. That's almost always what it's going. You're trying to ignore something. You're not working through something, uh, and so you're looking for so some sort of a high to free you, you from think it. That do you think that's always the case? I think chemical becomes a part of it. I think that ends up being... So I think it could be... An, an, I think it's possible to be an average person and all of a sudden, you know, get hooked on drugs or something like that. But the problem is we know a million drug addicts, gamblers, all this stuff, and like almost all of them, we start to realize we hear their life. Yeah, and they're that's like, so interesting. It's very rare. Like, you know, every other part of my life is super healthy and then I have this and we're like... But it's not. Yeah, and it's, it's yeah, it's not. It's rarely, and it's funny. And I know this is all anecdotal, but from experience, there's there's a there's something there that they're either trying to escape or even amplify. Right. That yeah. high, that rush, that, that high. I feel good about myself. Yeah. Like I feel good about myself. Like yeah. I, I need I need a reason. Like I don't like me or I don't like my yeah. life. And it could you could come from a perfectly normal, healthy family, but something gets Absolutely. in your head. Like maybe you had the overachieving sibling yeah. and you don't feel like anything. And yeah. so you want to feel good about yourself. And again, if you're an addiction, I'm oversimplifying it. This is completely sure. anecdotal. Yeah. Right. But at some point after talking to 6,000 people who are addicted to right. drugs and you're like, uh, there's or a whatever, common theme there's here. a common theme going on yeah. there. And it's, and it really could be just simply as I didn't have healthy coping mechanisms. Yeah. You know, what's been really healthy for me is while meeting with, truthfully, hundreds, if not thousands of people in recovery and addiction. I've done homeless ministry for years where I l- slept and lived on the streets to be with people. Um, it caused me- Is that me, how you describe how you got on the streets? Yeah, it was is a that, choice. Is that your, yeah, yeah, is that, that, right? that's, is that's that, how I describe every it. Time him, yeah. Every time somebody asked him, every time somebody handed him a dollar, he goes, this is a choice. This yeah. is a, He'd yeah. look in their eyes and hold it. They're like, this yeah. is a choice. are you homeless? Because I want to be. <laughs> They're like, okay, okay you're kind of weird. Uh, but it, it, it caused me to be really introspective and think, okay, I don't think I'm addicted to anything. 
because I don't feel like I was having the same repercussions. Right. But to then stop and go, wait a minute, what do I lean on? Right. And what do I, so we talk about cigars all the time. Cigars help us mellow out. Yeah. They really do. Like they help me relax because I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm running at 120 miles an hour all the time. And the cigar actually causes me to stop and sit because if you are amped and smoke really fast, it's not good. It's not yeah. fun. So it actually helps me slow down. And so yeah. I go, okay, so I actually do have a little dependence on a cigar. And, and for me, I am broken differently than other people. And I have fear of disappointing people. Right. So like drugs and gambling addictions, it's not that I'm above that. It's that it goes against my biggest fears. Right. Like I wouldn't right. want to look sure. like a disappointment. So that's not healthy. Right. So I had to work through that. But I, I would tell people, I'm like, yeah, I'm just not in your situation because I'm broken differently. That's yeah. all it is. And we talk, it's funny that you even say that you worked through that because we both worked through that in a really similar way, which was counseling. Right. Like we are huge advocate, which I think is even a distinction of us being pastors. Oh my gosh. That we advocate for professional. Right. We tell people all the time when they come to us, hey, can we meet up for counseling? We say, you can meet up with us for advice and Christian advice and yeah. biblical ideas, yeah. but, but professional counseling is probably what you should do and what you need. I, we're oddly rare in the pastoral realm and in a church world yep. that we that we tell people that they should go seek. That's crazy to me. Well, why why is it the Bible literally says that God is a wonderful counselor? Why would Christians not think that there's a gift of wonderful counseling? It's because you're taking that out of context. That's right. That's right. It should be much less rare. We should know our lane. We should know. We pastoral really counseling should. is fine. Pastoral, pastoral counseling is oh, advice fine. based. It's advice based. It, Wise yeah. counsel, spiritual yeah. counsel. We we can help you understand your spiritual gifts. We can help you understand your role in the church. But when it comes to dealing with trauma from your past, that's not our role. That's it's not. And that's, no. that's not what we're and here we for. can. And it's funny because after counseling for so many years. We might have great advice on the topic. hundred percent. And so I'm not even downplaying what pastors can do, but I really just feel like we should, one, stop putting so much pressure on ourselves as right. pastors. We're not here right. to fix somebody's lives. I'm here to point you to Jesus. That's right. it. Well, and what I like about like if something, you have the Christian, like for us, it's FPU, Fresno Pacific University. They have a marriage and family therapy. Well, you would call them a Christian university? That's, that's right. <laughs> Some churches in town wouldn't. That's Some the funny churches part. in town would not. Uh, but I would. But what I like. They're a faith-based organization. That's right. That's right. What I like is parsing stuff like Freud and other famous counselors where they're saying, here's where they're tapping into truth. Yes. And here's where they're wrong. Do you know what I mean? hundred percent. But as opposed to being like, Freud does nothing. No, no, no. There's right. elements of what he's talking about that are really healthy. And the other parts is just like, no, nah, he's off. And that he, is one of the saddest things that our culture, that I feel like I've watched our culture do over the last roughly five years. I'm sure it was happening before. But everything being so black and white. Oh my gosh. That if you Demons say one wrong thing, everything you've ever said is, is false. And I'm like, thrown out. Yeah. how on earth can we not just say, Man, I disagree with this, this, and this from that guy. But these four things he said are right on. They're right. It's right on, and it's like I don't understand. We determine. I don't like who you are, and that will determine whether or not what you're saying is true. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're joking, right? Yeah. Because you can be the devil and say gravity exists, and be like, he's right. Right. He's we not can't wrong. Do it. It's funny. I just heard Louis C.K. talking about this, the comedian. He said uh, he was on set at Fox News at one point. They were filming a scene from his oh, show. They let him film there. That's hilarious. Oh, I know. But he actually said the guy he was filming with, I can't remember his name. He's like, I really like this guy. He's great. But he said, I was watching. I was behind the scenes watching. It was when President Obama was giving a speech. He said the, the speech was on a screen in the corner, and it was muted. Nobody was listening to it. They're all talking about, like, I need you in this place. Do you have this? Blah, blah, blah. And they're all yelling and screaming. The speech ended. Nobody heard the speech. And then they clicked live on air. The guy immediately said, I can't believe this guy and what he said. And they went off about how he was wrong about everything. And he goes, nobody heard anything. Mm -hmm. And he said, every like, news station is doing that now. It's just we're, we've, we've drawn lines. You're not on my side. You're not on my team. This is the problem. So the teams. Any, oh, dude, it's the worst. So the anything you say, I, I don't want to hear it and you're wrong. Right. As opposed to saying, oh, you're a human. You probably have some good stuff and some bad stuff. Let me just listen. And I think and this I, is I where know. in the church, we've left reason and logic. 
and and now it's just good and bad. And the church right. has done this too. Yeah. As opposed to it, it's actually people who are bad can say true things, and people who are good can say false things. And you have to use reason and logic yeah. to parse it and say, right. no, man, like you are, you're my hero. Like my 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 freshman year, my uh, professor for a New Testament. Uh, I thought this was like the smartest man on the planet. Bill Murray. That's right. He was in Chicago. That's a good reference. Yeah, my, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and he was convinced he could lose his salvation. Now, that was not part of the doctrine of our university. Okay. And he told this story about what a dipshit he was and how he walked away from his faith. And then he came back to his faith and he says, during that time, there's no way I was saved. And I, this guy was my hero. And him and I just had some really biblical talks where he's smarter than I am, but I'm just like, dude, right, right. this is your, it's called Isa Jesus. You're reading your situation because you 100%. felt so bad about yourself yeah. that you're altering your theology to believe that you weren't saved during that time. And so we had these things. And again, so that's the only thing I ever disagree with this guy about in my life. And I thought this guy's brilliant. He's a genius. I'm glad to say he was my professor. And yet in that moment, I'm like, no, dude, you're just sad about what you did when you were in college. Yeah. That's it. And it what's Just funny, like Floyd. He's sad about the stuff he did in college. Well, uh, or I don't know if he's sad yet. I don't know if he's reached that. <laughs> he hasn't reached that level. Yeah, he needs to get there. Did a lot in college. That's the, I, I wish, I, I don't know why, because I, I understand how serious God and salvation and Christianity, I, I get the seriousness of it, but so often I'm like, guys, you got to relax. You're not in charge of this anyway. So this isn't up to you. So it's, I, I think what's my favorite part is whether you think you can lose your salvation or not. Won't uh, change whether or not you can. Doesn't change if God, because God is in control of it. Right. So whatever you believe doesn't actually matter that much. Right. right. God's got it. So at I guess some it point, would matter if you thought you could lose your salvation. No, no, no. So I'm it, saying it matters. I'm, right, right. To us. Yeah. But I'm saying like, so like it to God, it won't change it. it. Yeah. But for somebody who thinks you can... I'm always like, I always... The uh, panic at all times. Those conversations with that group is just like serious. And they're like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You know, so I'm very mindful. And I'm like, so you get in a car accident and you let out a giant, oh, yeah, and then you die. What happens? I've always wanted to go. So I do this with every time I meet somebody who says you can lose your salvation. Uh, I, I try and find the line. Because there is one. Because there, there has to be one. Because yeah. no one yeah. can. Because you can't be Jesus, 100%. and they know it. So you're like, there has to and be I, this. And I, it's one of my favorite conversations because it's it's so thought provoking. Even for me, where I'm like, oh, so what is actually bad? And good? you know, like I really love getting down. Because at some point, I'm like, if all your sins are forgiven, Jesus says it is finished. What if you don't know that you sinned? Right. Well, then it can't be a sin. I'm like, oh, that's not true. Hmm. I can accidentally sin. I can, you know, and I, I can, cannot know the Ten Commandments. What if I right. forget to ask for forgiveness? The, the, we, uh, you and I, have had, I've had this conversation with I so many people. I think it's so enjoyable. Because yeah. I'm trying to free them. That's exactly what I'm Because I'm literally trying like, to do. I'm not trying to pick And on you. try and shame them. That, yes. So, I want freedom and shame. You know, I accom- freedom and shame go hand in I hand. I accomplish shaming them. <laughs> yeah. Then I try to free them. <laughs> What's okay, sad about, about your professor is that he was on the other side of it. He was experiencing shame over something that he had already gone through and gotten past. Right. right? That's the worst part of it for me. So like I lived through, I grew up with the, you can lose your salvation theology, right? And it wasn't until I had gone through an experience where if you could lose your salvation, I would have, and then came back into a better relationship with the Lord, actually came back into a place of healing. And, and it was there that I realized that, oh, I didn't lose my salvation during that time. I may have walked away from the relationship that God wanted to have with me, yeah. but he never left me. Right. Yeah. I left him. The way that I came to the understanding that I never lost my salvation was through my healing process, I went, oh, I'd, I'd be an absolute idiot to think that after years of ministry and experiencing pain in ministry that caused me to go into a pretty deep state of depression where I didn't want to have anything to do with church, God, or any of his people, yeah. to think that God would have sent me to hell over pain that was caused to me, right? that's not a God that I would want to serve. No, and here's the, and again, if, but if that's the reality of God, whether you want to, you know what I mean? Like, for right. people who think like that, which I immediately say, okay, you are a child, you're totally mad at your dad, 
you pack up your bags as a little kid. Mm-hmm. You're like, I'm running away, and you leave. I believe there's a believe there's a description in the Bible that you're describing. I think, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, when is your dad not your dad? That's, That's it's right. that simple. When does that happen? Yep. Jesus gives the prodigal Still for this fine. reason. I, it, it literally it's is the, the same. story. You know what's funny is I used to think because I was part of some conservative Baptist, right? And so they were like, oh, these guys can lose their salvation. They're idiots. And then they would say, you know, but they're like, they're not, they didn't lose their salvation. They were never saved in the first place. Right. And so I was locked in that dialogue with that mm. group. And then I'm like, oh, you're both effed up. Because <laughs> that's where eventually I was like, oh, it's like, it's like when somebody who's really good at arguing, they keep you on a, the same track. Yeah. They don't let yeah. you get off their yeah. track of reasoning. Yeah. So you have to kind of get outside of that and look and say, oh, no, no actually, you're, you're both wrong. And, and you don't want to hear that. Yeah. Uh, but the reality is, is that when you're born into the kingdom, Romans 10, 9, if yeah. you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. When you move into what the Bible actually says about salvation yes. and, and what actually happens when you are a new creation, you're born again, you stop becoming a fruit checker. Yeah. He, you, you stop becoming a fruit checker and it ends up being... Uh, and it ends up being this place where it is no longer about did you lose your salvation, did or were you never saved, and it really becomes about this place of here's what I know, and I I, I believed in Jesus and the Bible yeah. says that I'm a son. And the reality is, I think there probably is a group of people who said they were saved and never were. Yeah, I mean, we course, have that in right. Revelation. Of course, right. there's a group right. that 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 you could argue like, well, they didn't 100%. know the Lord. It looked like they walked away. Because they said the sinner's prayer in church one day, but 100%. they didn't actually believe in their heart. Here's right. the great part about it. What does that have to do with what, me? Why am I right. checking? This isn't my deal. Especially because we'd say, like, you know, like, why am I checking, like, the, you know, by your fruits, they will know. Um, oh, I'm blanking on this passage. By your fruits, they will know you are saved. Yeah. But, and so, but the whole idea is I'm always telling people, like, but you know, like, you know that, like, Plants have seasons, right? Uh-huh. There, there are times yeah. when you don't have fruit on a tree. That's good. Yeah, it's That's it's good. they have seasons, yeah. and so so by that by that token is that fruits don't determine what a plant is. The seed that's planted determines what a plant is. Mm. And so that's what, and you don't know that. And the truth is they will- stop trying. They will know you by your love for one another. Right. Right. That's the part where I think Jesus makes it real clear, where I'm like, whether you're bearing fruit or not, whether you're in a season- And sometimes I'm not bearing fruit. You might have, well- You might be watching this podcast and saying, you guys aren't bearing fruit. Well, yeah. Mm. I haven't seen fruit out of your life. It's not a long time. time. Uh, but that's, I mean, I just think, man, even if things are rough, they'll know me by my love. Yeah. Right. And again, we talked about this last week. I think it's huge. Love all, serve all. The greatest commandments. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. The second commandment is just like it. Just love everybody else. How yeah. could you spend like, time trying to decide who's saved and not saved? Are you the dumbest person on the planet? Why aren't you just being like, here's what I know. Why? why God loves you, so, and I'm going to love you too. Yeah. yeah. I don't, why... Why waste your time? Why spend the effort to try and do something that was never well, yours to do? Well, yeah. it, it, does, it, does whether or not a person saved determine on whether or not, is that the determination of whether or not we should love them? Right. No, yeah, yeah. our job is to love the people that God puts in front of us, period. 100%. And in that's, the, it's funny, I we brought this up uh, last night with my wife. We were talking, I can't even remember what we were talking about, but I said, I, I heard such an interesting uh, sermon years ago that talked about when, when Paul says about the guy who's sleeping with his stepmom, I think it is, in the church, and he says, you know, if you bring him before the elders, you bring him before the congregation, if that doesn't work, you, you uh, kick him out of the church and treat him like a non-believer. And the pastor was saying, for so many years I heard that preached, and it was all about like, oh, now we hate the guy and we kick him out and we don't want anything to do with him. And the guy goes, wait, is that how you're supposed to treat non-believers? You treat him like someone who's not saved, which means you love him. I, you get him really out of the, you get him out of your congregation because right, he's you want harming them to damage. people. Right? Do you want to separate? However, for sure. how like we're called to love people that don't know the Lord. Do you, right? That's and I was so like, oh, good. That's beautiful. Do you know what's funny is I just had this conversation with someone where somebody was a Christian and acting not like a Christian, and I said we just had this conversation. I said, treat him like a non-believer. And for me, a non-believer is I'm a lot more gracious. Yeah. I have right. lower expectations on them. Okay. I'm, I'm right here, dude. Like <laughs> kind of <laughs> weird, but all right. And that's, that's kind of, it is, it's that exact idea. Yeah. Whereas I'm like, when I'm with non-believers, I'm a lot more. So if they're doing things that aren't Christian, like I'm like, well, yeah, cause that's how I'm kind of like, I'm just going to love my, you. I love when Christians try and hold non-Christians to a, a godly standard. 
I'm like, wait, yeah. they, they didn't buy into this. You this know, isn't their thing. You know that they're just acting like what they are, right? Mm. Well, it's just, I don't even understand. Like, why would you hold somebody to a standard that they never, they never are trying to do? That, right. look, I don't believe in God. I don't want any part of that. And you're like, well, then don't sin. I'm like, wait, no, that's the opposite. They get to do whatever they want. That's, yeah. well, I don't get it. You know what's funny is uh, we had a, a gal that was at our church in L.A., and if I turned a microwave on in the room, she would run out of the room. Yeah, I remember you telling me she about her. She was like, ah, microwaves are going to kill me. I just immediately don't like her. Do you, know what I, do you know what I think of every time when I think of that? I think of the Christians when they're around non-Christians who take the Lord's name in vain, and they're just like, ah! Yeah, you can't And I'm it. like, are you, are, are you genuinely that fragile yeah. that you can't handle people who don't know anything about God? saying things that they don't know what they're saying that you have to be like, ah, or don't say that around me. I'm like, yeah. I get, I love Jesus too. I don't think Jesus is covering his ears every time they misuse his name. I think he can handle it. I think yeah. he's like, yeah, they don't, uh, the rabbis tell a great, uh, great story. It's not, it's, so it's not in the Bible. I don't even think it's in the Talmud. Um, but it's about, it's a story about Abraham. And he's, uh, he's out in the middle of nowhere and he's in his tent and a uh, traveler comes by and, and uh, Abraham sees him and says, oh, come on, come on, come get some shelter. Come stay in, the, in my tent. So he invites the guy in, makes him some food. Guy starts to eat and, uh, and Abraham says, don't you pray before you eat your food? And he says, he says, no. He goes, don't you recognize that there is a God? He goes, no, I, always rec- I only recognize fire and water says, Abraham grabs him by the collar, drags him and throws him out of the tent. And then he says, God speaks to him. And this, it's funny, it's just choking me up because I just love this. This is who God's been forever and how people have seen him. God says, Abraham, why'd you throw that man out of your tent? He says, he didn't, he didn't acknowledge you. And God says, I have been tolerating him for 40 years. Mm. Could you not tolerate him for one night? Yeah. Mm. Talking about the, the ancient Hebrew stuff, uh, Hunters, the show Hunters, I started watching a little while so ago. So good. It's about, uh, like, it's like in the 70s, I think, 70s, 80s, uh, a group of Jewish concentration camp survivors and uh, their kin, like their kids, got together a little group and they hunt the Nazis who were brought to the US and what? like are living under uh, disguise. And it's, it's a little inglorious. Oh, it's a yes. lot of inglorious. It's pretty oh, fun. Like yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little foul, but they're hunting these Nazis and they make them like confess who they were and the crimes they've done before they execute them. That's amazing. So it's total vigilante justice. Uh, but so often, I think one of the things that draws me into the show is, is there, most of them are still very Jewish. And so they're quoting the Talmud all the time. They talk about the parables and they talk about stories. And I'm like, it's so neat to hear a lot of those old stories. It's one of my favorite things. It's why I liked Rob Bell back in the day so much is because he Ugh. brought to life the ancient Jewish culture. Yeah. And I just, I, it was so fun because they talk about like how God works in mysterious ways, but they have all these cool Jewish sayings that I'm like, oh, that's so good. Like so many that I love. So uh, it's not a show that I can recommend, but do yourself a favor. He also doesn't recommend Rob Bell. I, I still <laughs> like Rob. I think he's a great, I said this forever, even when he like had his big fall. I, everybody like turned on him massively and I'm yeah. like, well, you can't deny he's still probably one of the greatest communicators of our day. Sure. Phenomenal communicator. Say yeah. His theology yeah. got off in some stuff. Yeah. yeah. Screwy. He still said some of the most beautiful things I'd ever heard. Yeah. And it's again, baby with the bathwater type thing, bath right? Water. Like yeah, yeah. throw that baby out. Throw yeah. the baby out. That's right. Name of the Keep podcast. Keep that dirty bathwater. Throw that baby out. <laughs> <laughs> this bathwater is actually better than that baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so All right, let's get let's get to let's get to some worldly what do we discussions. Got? Uh, this is actually a good question on Ask Reddit. What is something you know is true but makes absolutely no sense? Oh my gosh, that's we this just talked tying about that on in, Sunday. Yeah, I was this is tying say. into it. Yeah. What is something repeat it again, just my ear again. What time. is something you know is true but makes absolutely no sense? So without I I mean, it's, it's kind of a cheap one, but God's grace and mercy really don't sure. make sense. And I, re- I genuinely struggle with it. Like, so like we talked about, like, I feel like I should lose my salvation. Mm-hmm. I feel like there are so many times when I look back where I'm like, I know I was saved at this point. I know I came to a saving knowledge of God and a confession and it was real. But then I did such stupid things. And it's so weird to me that God's like, oh, no, no, I didn't even see those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your sin was covered by the blood of Christ. That's the whole point. It doesn't make sense to me. I know it's true, and it just doesn't make sense to me. Probably yeah. better than that would be counting macros. I know it's true. 
Do you know? Do you know what's true? I don't know what a macro is. Exactly. I just wanted to say it. I feel like I don't it's, know what's it's true. Big? I know what a Macron is. It's um, big. The no. president of yeah of France. France. It's yeah. Macron. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a Macron. This Macron. Is, Macron. This is an intentional, but it does relate to the sermon yesterday as well. I was back in the booth yesterday, in the sound booth yesterday, no, and I was like, "What booth? <laughs> <laughs> what booth were you in?" I was at a phone I was, booth. I was, I was, like, I was at by myself and during and the service. I'm really the, good at my job. I don't remember the exact verbiage of the question, but essentially the question was, is like, who's your greatest enemy? A lot of the answers were, you know, it's, it's myself. Yeah. And the answer I think that Joe was looking for, definitely the answer that Ryan was looking for. I got was, a little mad. Was it's the devil. And then the guys were, because I was standing kind of between Dave and Bruno and they were both saying the same thing that like I was saying and that a lot of the answers online were, it's myself. And then you went on to express your frustration and then at the same time justify exactly why it is myself. And it is the greatest thing that I know is true and yet I have a hard time believing. Like I know the enemy is my greatest enemy, but I struggle with that being true because I feel like I'm my greatest enemy. You, you struggle with your idea. And I think we all do. We all struggle yeah. with our true identity in Christ. Right. That's very difficult for us to know. It's tough for us to know our shit. Right. But to, but to also know that we are a perfected being in Christ. Like knowing it and knowing it are it's, different. It's very mm. difficult. So that, yeah. I think that's awesome. Well, on like, that yeah. same line is, I think, and it's not for me, but it is weird, is the idea of, I would say for a long time, I really process this idea of how are all my sins forgiven and yet I sin. That I wrestled with that for years. Sure. Yeah, oh, that for was sure. A, that was a... That That's was why a, I, I do think... So we joked about last week how God made... Or Jesus made it so easy to just be like, oh, just love everybody. And then we needed the Bible. But I think a lot of Paul's writings were so profound when he talks about like, I'm the chiefest of sinners. I don't do the things I want to do and I do the things I don't brings so much comfort to know that you're not alone. Just yes. to realize that yeah. you're like, oh, okay. So the, the, one of the greatest men in the Christian hall of faith, this, this guy who wrote most of the New Testament, we all, everybody looks up to. visit this hall? What, when are we going to tour there? <laughs> it's the actually, hall of faith. it's right around the corner. I yeah. like that he one up he one up Paul. Paul's the chief of sinners. Ryan's the chiefest, chiefest. of sinners. Chiefest. I'm of sinners. the chiefest, chiefest. Well, of if sinners. you look at the original text. <laughs> 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 the coin he agreed. Yes, right. It's actually Translates. the chiefest. chiefest. The you chiefest. know what, dude? You're the chiefest. You're the, what's up, chiefest? You're the chiefest. That's what you're going to call <laughs> <That's> people now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, no, no, dude. You're the chiefest of sinners for sure. There's, so uh, on a, uh, this is totally goofy and off topic, but the, the what do I know to be true but just don't understand? That the earth is round? Like, well, well I thought you said no to be true. <laughs> it's way different, Joe. Uh, I have. I, I just thought of this because I looked. The, we have two of our fans are out, and so the company, which is amazing, uh, sent us fans like without questions asked. I showed them a video of them not working, and then they just sent us new ones. They're great. I have to wire them up. Like I understand like how to wire up a light and switches and these fans. But the idea of electrons flowing through wires to bring power sure. and how that power gets generated yeah. is so confusing to me. Yeah. Like, I get it. A tiny fraction of a little bit, I kind of understand it. But I don't understand it at all. Right. Like, in the sun, it, the sun produces more energy in an hour. Enough energy in one hour to run the planet for a year. The sun is just, full, it's just constantly producing so much energy. We don't quite know how to capture it well enough yeah. yet. Like our solar panels are all... I am blown away by the idea of ele like electricity. I think it's so weird. I'm blown away by the idea of relationships. There are some pairings of people that have a really good relationship. Ooh. And I'm like, how are these two together? Interesting. Mm. These are seem so mismatched. Yeah. And they have a really good relationship. But I'm just like, the one seems like amazing. Yeah. And the other one, not. Oh, that's always interesting. Yeah, where you're just like, yeah. and, and it's working. Yeah. But it's like totally working. Like, I don't get how yeah. this happens. Personalities are weird. I always say in, in relationships, it's so beautiful when you see two people who both think they married up. Oh. I'm always like, that's so pretty. Like, it's always, it's always such a good time to be like, no, that, my spouse is way better than me. I wonder if Lisa would say about me. I think that about her. I don't know if she thinks that about me, but I really do think that about her. Like, she was from a good family. You think you, think you married up. 100%. And you wonder if she thinks I, she married up. I don't up. think she does. I can guarantee you. That she does. She is pretty sure. She married up. 
she married down. <laughs> she's, she knows it. She's, she's sure of it. She's like, I married a child. She's like, I'm, <laughs> I'm raising a husband. Every morning she wakes up and she's like, look at that top bun. That's, I am, I've that's, done real well No, what's myself. sad is that. worst today. It looks like the, it has a feather. I'm like. But, hey, what's the know. worst part about the top bun is that she's like, that's your best quality. <laughs> That's, that's yeah. where I'm at with you. Yeah, yep. that's, that's where I'm with you. This is your best quality. I'm so happy about that top <laughs> one. That's the only thing tolerable about you. And I hate it. So just so we know, yeah, just so, I hate it. Just so we know where we stand. But it's the best part of you. Yeah. <laughs> Floyd, anything come to mind? Man, it's so many things. But I don't, I'm stupid. I don't know a lot of things. Mm. That's my problem. Is it's I don't, true. I don't understand how the universe works. So I'm like, yeah. how's the sun doing that? It is weird because <laughs> w- when you really think about the stuff that you know to be true, it's what do you know to be know true, to be true but, but still. Absolutely do not understand. Yeah. How the planets stay in place. There's, there's a lot of things that I don't, that I don't know to be true. That's, mm. that is, you know, this I is the problem. That's my struggle. I think that's where I'm at. It's yeah. like, I'm like, what do I know? It's yeah. all spiritual it stuff. It's all yeah. spiritual stuff. Which the is, by the way, I know, things right. that I, I can't prove. I'm like, I know this to be true and it's the thing I can't prove. That's I am the a, big struggle. I am a walking yeah. mess. And I know yeah. to be true because it's, it's anecdotal in my life and I've experienced yeah. insane things with God. Yeah. That's crazy. But I'm just like, realizing I'm uh, terrible. Yeah. I'm t- <laughs> so my, all my foundational <laughs> beliefs are things that are purely We're unfaithful. all having existential crises Faith right now. testimony. Mm-hmm. I, you know, for me, it's sound, like music. Yeah. Like we'll sit and we'll jam and then afterwards talk In about it. In case you don't know, Josh is the children's pastor. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have no kids in our church. Yeah. They're right here. Yeah. He's just around singing all the time, yeah. never watching children. <laughs> why do you just walk around with a guitar, you loser? <laughs> And that we'll talk about it. And I just sit there and I'm like, we just made a bunch of sounds. Yeah. And it was, it was satisfying. It was fulfilling. It was healing. It was an escape. It's just vibrations of the molecules in the air. Bizarre, right? Yeah. Hey, what do you think about, uh, have you heard about like the, like the different frequencies and they're like, some are like the earth's frequencies of like 40, 440 frequencies or something. Now. People and like, love those frequencies. Right. It's all stuff. over YouTube well, yeah. and I've watched a lot of them and every time I'm like, okay. And this one guy actually plays, he talks about how music got changed in this certain year. He does a great job hmm. of breaking it all down and it changed the frequency because at some point, I thought this was super interesting. The note, like the note C, like a C, mm-hmm. a chord, the C chord wasn't uniform around the world at some right. point and everybody was like no this is a C and somebody else goes no it's yeah. this and yeah. like there had to be a group of people that got together and it took years and decades to, until everybody actually agreed okay that's the actual okay so that's what chord. messes me up about people looking at colors because our eyes aren't identical you don't know. that's the weirdest thing where we're like we're agreeing something is red but, we, we but don't I'm actually like. seeing it differently than maybe you. Like when we look at these cups, yeah, that's like the purple cup. This, yes, yeah, that purple cup. That's right. Weird. That's like a, that blows me away. Yeah, like when people openly are like their their uh, ability to see color is so different. We can all be like, oh yeah, that's not it. But then sometimes I like that. Uh, when I was younger, you'd mock somebody like, look at that, that's orange. I'm like, that's not orange, you dummy. That's kind of more like a burnt orange. Then yeah, you, then you start to realize people are like, oh, that. They're probably right. They're just seeing it slightly different. Have than you I am. seen? Right. So a, a decent percentage of people are colorblind. I think you are a little bit, right? I'm not colorblind, but but uh, I'm color dumb. Yeah. Color dumb. You're yeah. you're color <laughs> boring. Ignorant. Color you're color boring. boring. Yeah, like to, like if they're subtleties, I I miss subtleties. Okay, sometimes. so yeah. there is so the, it, but there's a decent group that is pretty colorblind, mm-hmm. and then they made those glasses that allow people to see color Luke. in mm. full. This conversation was with Luke. Oh, was it? Yeah. There are videos, I think I legitimately weep every time I see a video of someone who's colorblind, oh my puts gosh. on glasses, and they're, they, they can't, can't imagine. They, they take can't them off, take they in, cry. They, take them off. they like, can't take in, because it's too much stimulus all of a right. sudden. And I'm like, what a cool, there's so many cool spiritual concepts to that too, but mm-hmm. I just think what a neat realization to be able to like change something that quickly. Mm. To be like, oh, now I can see clearly. I'm like, oh, okay. it's so beautiful. That's a hearing this, aids one. Uh, oh, this will so probably good. be taken out of the podcast, but I'll say it anyway. <laughs> this probably won't make the cut. We'll, just, well, we'll now g- it's going to stay. We'll, we'll, give, a, we'll give a pause it's just like, so that he can uh, edit it out. Like, uh, okay, now. <laughs> okay, everybody reboot. <laughs> but it's fun for us. <laughs> okay, those are good. Uh, what's, uh, what's another question? I, I love Ask Reddit. I, it's such they're so thoughtful it is yeah. the most uh, so here's the th- did i'm pretty sure that most of the ask reddit questions are created by ai are they really pretty sure 
Oh, that's interesting. And I like, and here's the best part because you can upvote things. Yeah. So the best questions are all of a sudden very, they're available right yeah. away. So if somebody, it's a terrible question, somebody you never needs even to see fact it. check that though uh, while you're watching this and then leave a comment if I'm right or not. Because yeah. I might be totally wrong, just so right. you know. But I thought that was the case. Alan Iverson is definitely making all the questions for Ask Reddit. So is you're he, right. Is he the flat earth guy? <laughs> no, he's is a basketball one? player. Wait, no, I know, but one of the basketball players no, is like, that's no, Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving. That's KI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're all by KI. That's all the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Putting aside obvious things like cars and smartphones, what's an ordinary object from our modern lives that would freak out a person from the 1600s? Oh, fax machines. Do you guys not use those anymore? <laughs> I still use mine. Pager. Uh, counting on your fingers. Like, what? You can use digits for counting? When, when did spectacles, when was spectacles That's invented? Crazy. I Probably. just thought about glasses. I just I saw yours and went, oh my gosh! Could um, you imagine? So I'm legally blind. Having clean ones? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> could you I imagine can't. Can't. leaning off your? I don't know. Glasses? Okay. These glasses All right. are the worst. Ready, ready for a bad reference point? This is what we do as Americans. I like it. I like so it. So instead of checking an actual source, in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, Heard with of uh, Kevin Costner. Yeah. He just got back from, uh, right, and he uses a the telescope. He uses a telescope and yes. the moor. Uh, it was uh, what's this? Morgan Freeman plays the the moor. Yeah. And he's like, what is this? So I'm like, is that accurate to the period? No, wait, isn't he, he's the one, isn't Robin Hood freaked out? Uh, no, it's right, you're right, the, the more. Morgan Freeman Morgan was the Freeman one who had brought the it from another land. That's right, yeah, and so yeah. he's freaked out. So and Robin of Loxley like freaked he's out. He's like, whoa, whoa, and he's doing this and he's waving in front yeah. of it. So is that period accurate? I, I don't know. I mm. don't either. I'm going to say yeah, because everything in that movie was true. I think that was a documentary. Mostly his accent. Mistaken. His accent was spot he nailed on. it. Man, he can do the Brits like nobody. I still say. <laughs> do you actually uh, should hear it? You remember Christian Slater's accent in that? Oh, yeah, 100%. He, he went Renaissance Fair. He didn't go yes. British. Yes. He went Renaissance. Huzzah! He was great. <laughs> but Good I will. Tomorrow, Robin. Probably, and <laughs> maybe once a week, uh, if not two or three times a month, uh, I will say because it hurts more, cousin. Because it hurts more. You like, twit. Yeah. Because, like, with a, why with a spoon? spoon. I, Lisa, get, I don't know what it is. That was one of the, the best ways. Lisa and I say that knife. all the time. All the time. Because it'll hurt more, you twit. I love it so much. Isn't but yeah, funny? I think I think glasses. I so uh, First of all, Alan. Alan Rickman. Alan, Alan Rickman, Rickman steals the show. Did we talk about this? Uh, they make this movie, right? They make the movie. And they, back when they were always like showing it to audiences to try and get feedback to see what people thought of it. Yeah. And uh, initially, there were way more Alan Rickman scenes. Did you know this? No. There were way more, like a lot. A oh. lot of Alan Rickman scenes. Why did they? By the end of the movie, people were mad that Robin One. wins. Uh, yeah. Because Alan Rickman is the best part of the movie. So they cut all these Alan Rickman scenes out. To make out him worse. Are you serious? I'm not joking. Hmm. I mean, not he was joking. the best part. He's amazing. And so they're like, He's the people, so over the people top. were mad that he loses oh. when they showed audience, when they did the... That you know, is fantastic. Isn't that a... That yeah. shows what a good actor That's he is. That's how good you are. Yeah. yeah. Glasses. Let's see. What other modern day things? I mean, uh, any, Comfortable a car? chairs. Bed. It says... It, it, says, it, it said, says for... Yeah. We're, yeah. No, putting not aside cars, and, cars and smartphones. Cars and... A telephone? Like, it's I mean, ordinary just, objects. Yeah. Telephone. A telephone would be... A telephone would be... A, a camera. I think a flashlight. A camera would be mind-boggling. So TVs. What was the? Have you guys ever seen a thousand years of longing? I just brought this up yesterday. No, I haven't seen it. Yet. So I watched half yeah. of it on the the flight home from Florida. I finished it last night. It went from a really great movie to I don't know if I like it anymore. Uh, I didn't like the end very much at all. But the movie itself was really cool. Uh, Idris Alba is a gin, like a genie who's granting wishes, and he talks about, basically, he was around with uh, the Queen of Sheba and Solomon. And, they, and David, because like, David, David, Solomon's, Sheba's uh, Solomon's mom. What? So David is with uh, Sheba, right? Isn't Sheba? No, 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 it's Solomon. Okay, well, who's, who's uh, David in the woman over that he's Bath Sheba? Isn't that Bath Sheba? Isn't that who he's No, the Queen with? of Sheba. Oh, there we go. Yeah, That's yeah. why I'm confusing. Okay. Way different. Uh, because I'm but, like, I'm like, when you told me the story, I'm like, is someone hooking up with his mom yeah. in this movie? <laughs> no, that would be super weird. That's right. Uh, but he is. That's in the New Testament. He's br- <laughs> yeah. Back to Freud. He's brought to modern day the the gin, and he sees a TV for the first time, and he like freaks out, and he's like, what? Who who trapped this little man inside the TV? And then he's able to, because he's made up of electromagnetic waves. He takes it's Einstein is on the TV, and he takes Einstein out of the TV. Oh my oh, god! Because he can cool. control it all. And it, 
they, they do some really fun stuff, but just the idea of there's nothing, like everything is just the world in front of you. And then all of a sudden to see like small creatures in a television would blow your mind. It'd sure. Like you've trapped sure. small creatures. Like what is happening right yeah. now? Right. It's pretty fun. All right. Uh, rabbit trail. Had you ever heard the term gin before the Witcher? Yeah. Was it The Witcher that was we saw? Yeah. Well, no, no, it was not. It wasn't The Witcher. It was actually in uh, what we do in the shadows. What we do in the shadows. First time I'd ever heard the term gin. I, I had actually heard it not, before. I watched so, The Witcher before What We Do in the Shadows. So okay, it was the Witcher so for the, me. yeah, so both I think both talked about, but it was the it was in What We Do in the Shadows. I'm like, I don't gin. know where I first heard it, but yeah, yeah I had heard it before because I I knew it. Like I right always, when they said it, I already. Knew I always it. spell it out in my head with G H I N. I just assume it's G H I N. It's like D J I N N. Yeah, that's right. De gin. De gin. Gin. Want, that's, that's what I drink. Yeah. De Can gin? I have a glass yeah, of de gin, please? He's from Chicago. <laughs> hey, give me I'm some de gin. No, I was going to say, I'm watching the Bulls. <laughs> the Bulls. Drinking de gin. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that one's, that one's I think funny because it's, it's I think it's a limitless. Everything. Yeah. I think, it's, I think it's shoes not that you can't cook and eat. Wait. You, right. <laughs> wait. You could? Wait. You've not heard that during the... Did no, you not heard would. that? People would yeah. cook their shoes because they're, they're made leather. of leather. Uh, that's not yummy. I know, but well, when they're they starving to death, they would cook they their shoes. Care. I hear it was for, yeah, the taste thing. I, I, I worked with a tribe in South America that was so poor that they would uh, take tree bark and cook it and eat it because they had, like, no food. And so when uh, food would get short, they would take tree bark and cook it and eat it. And I was there one time, and I'm like, uh, that's still inedible. They'd boil it. And then you, they would chew on tree bark. Wow. And I'm like, there are no nutrients in that at all. Yeah. So it was the craziest thing. But you have so like. So I brought the, them cheeseburgers and the, blew their mind. <laughs> I just wanted to they see worship what cows, which was really I good for them. Just didn't tell them. <laughs> I didn't tell them. I always think it's weird whenever they give animals the cooked version of that animal. Oh, yeah. It like if you weird. throw chicken to chickens. Or... So we have chickens and we will often like, they're the garbage disposals of our backyard. They're fantastic. They give us eggs, but you throw all of your food scraps to them like the and they eat, they eat everything. Mm. Gross. No, we don't give them eggshells, but mm. I always think it's weird. And I don't do it because I like, I, I, it's I don't the think weirdest I do it. thing. I feel I don't bad think I do for it. them. I right. feel like that's the weirdest, like that's a dumb line. Like, but you're okay, and you're okay with killing them and eating them. Yeah, hundred percent. I am. I'm yeah. fine with but this. But the feed them their own kind is just. But I don't know why. I mean, most animals will do that. Anyway, hundred percent. It's not. And here's the thing. Like, it is not weird in the slightest bit. Yeah. I don't know why, but I'm like, if I have like scrambled eggs left over, I'm like, I'm just throwing those out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to have to eat your unborn child. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me feel weird. <laughs> uh, that's kinda, it just feels I weird. Won't, I, I won't eat chicken and eggs together. What? I'm what? sorry, what? I, I won't eat chicken and eggs together. What would be a reason to fry fire someone? Chicken? Do you eat fried chicken? Do I eat fried chicken? Yes, yeah. he does. Okay, we were do with you know the we process. We watched him yesterday. Yes, he ate for, fried yeah. chicken yesterday. Fried chicken? I did eat fried chicken yesterday. You did? Yeah, we, we were there. That was bad. You just ate chicken and eggs together. You ate a whole chicken family. No, yeah. Oh, because of yeah. the batter. I yeah, see what batter. you're saying. Yeah, oh, that's You're funny. not wrong. I was actually confused with well, where you were going. Well, let's go back into this weirdness. Let's get more. I know. I know. It's eggs listen. next to the chicken. Listen. Why won't I, you I eat them together? It's weird to me. I don't know why. It's just weird. You're serious. Like eating the whole family. I can't eat the whole family. Like I'm destroying the bloodline. But you can eat them separately. I can eat them separately. So are you slowly taking one into the other room and murdering it while the other ones are sitting in the room? That's what I feel like. Yeah. And I'll eat that one. But I'm on the other end because I'm like, I want to end this lineage right here right and here now. And now. Yeah, all yeah. in one fail. I was going to say, you'll eat eggs for breakfast and you'll eat chicken for dinner. So you're just drawing it out. Yeah, well, right yeah. now I won't eat eggs for breakfast. Why? Because oh. they're $30. Oh, oh. oh man. I'm angry. I thought he was going macros. Oh, I was hoping I, I'd I, hear I was waiting. I was waiting. <laughs> Is there uh, anything better? So uh, another random trail. Uh the one food on a desert island, you're only allowed one thing. You, you've won me over. Is there anything better than eggs? You've won me over. I don't know. You could eat eggs forever I love a million eggs different ways. so much. They are so rewarding. Every meal, I can have an egg and be totally happy. I can put an egg on any dish, and it makes it better. Scrambled like, eggs and over easy are just totally different experiences. They oh, are. Yeah. But if you only have one thing, you're not putting it on anything. No, no, no. But, I, but still, you can prepare Bark. them so many different you can, ways. You can prepare them very differently. And I just, I can't think of anything else that I've never even gotten close to tired Okay, of. hear about this. I never get, like, honestly, I eat eggs You know what's on a desert the island? Time. There's bugs. So the thought of actually cooking bugs in some like scrambled a bug eggs. omelet? Yeah, it'd be great. Hmm. A buglet. 
bug omelet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I gotta, yeah. You, and if you got tired again. of you got tired of a bug omelet, you could you know smash up some bugs and put some right. fried eggs over so the top. So what you're on the des- desert island? What's the one food then, Floyd? He's convinced me. I, I've went I, every I other route. I think he's right. I've thought it forever because I'm like I love steak. But at some it point, it gets old. I really, but I've never been sick of eggs, and I'm dead serious. I eat them so often because, again, if we don't eat eggs a lot, the eggs pile up in our house because we have 18 chickens yeah. that lay one to two eggs a day, mm. and so we will just get in a crazy amount. His so chickens we eat keep them just growing like mad because they keep eating chicken. Well, so they're just like, oh my gosh, we're and, like and so healthy. I, I've always thought, show me, your, show me your claws. They got the trembly, the you know, the cannibal <laughs> claws. Cannibal claws. Uh, Chicken inception. I've always thought the idea of uh, like dinosaurs coming from birds was so dumb. Like when I first heard that as a kid, and then we got chickens, and I'm like, oh, these are small dinosaurs. Yeah, they are terrifying. They murder each other on a daily basis. You don't have to convince Josh. He was scared of one not that long ago. Really? Don't you remember sitting no. there? And it kept it kept bothering him. <laughs> oh, yeah. At the house, yeah. <laughs> it kept bothering That's him right. on the deck. We and were... he's like, what's... And he's behind him. I was... <laughs> and he's like looking behind him all the time. <laughs> I was... He oh, was pecking at me. <laughs> totally was. It had, the chicken had beef with me. I did raise racist chickens, though. Yeah. In, my, in their defense. And rightfully so. That's how they were raised. Yeah. What do you want from them? I used to think it was pizza on a desert island, but it's it's eggs. I, uh, it's between eggs and ribs. I I really love ribs. Really? I love ribs. I will say you could Gosh, boil the bones for soup later, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you could have egg drop soup also with eggs. We oh, eat, well, yeah. like, I, I love ribs also. Yeah. That is a weird thing to, that we eat. The rib cage of an <laughs> animal is, so is bizarre, dude. Yeah. Like that, I don't know why that seems like one of the more barbaric things that we do. Well, I think Dude, it's also ribs things, are so tender. Some like of the our things that you've like, eaten for that to be the weird thing. Yeah, no, well, you're right. You're right. I eat and you know exactly things. what I'm thinking. I've of. eaten a lot of weird things. Uh, What's actually, the, I don't know what you're thinking of, but it, you're making it really weird for the people watching. What's right eating a pig you, anus? You know what I'm talking about. I've eaten pig anus. I've eaten uh, balut. Also is still one of the weirder the things. A hundred percent. It's a hundred percent. Balut is a weird one. The chicken, the mm-hmm. developed uh, chicken that yeah. you hard boil. That was a horrible prank my friend pulled on me. They did, it wasn't a prank intentionally. Oh, really? But they're like, yeah, you got to try this. And I, I hated it. Wait, wait, what did they, how do you, well, they're like, they... yeah, this is a delicacy in the Philippines. They're my Filipino friends and yeah. their family would always have spam and eggs and rice. And then like, yo, we got spam gotta... and eggs and rice. Sound it is... amazing. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Did you it's know amazing. I haven't had Smokes. spam? I had spam for the first time a year ago. No. For how? First time in my life I've ever having it. So you've had pig anus too then? No, yeah. Every, everybody's had spam. <laughs> yeah. It was, I went in thinking, because I think it's the grossest looking thing ever. Until it, you cook it up. You're right. And it was delicious. How did you eat it fried? Spam is we tried, you have Lisa to Lisa prepared it five ways. Oh, like, what all, were the five what? ways? I don't remember, but they were like, she tried all the, and everyone was good. Yeah. I was like, it like is so good. one way she was singing, another time <laughs> she, it's all just <laughs> sitting down. Up she's, yeah. She prepared it five different ways. I recently, I was at Costco and they had a huge mega pack of spam and my dad loves spam so i was like oh i'll get him some spam i'll get some for myself it's like 15 cans 16 it's so many i still have so many and i haven't eaten it yet and this was months ago i bought it and i get so excited to know it's there and i might have it for dinner tonight now that we've talked so i'm gonna have to go by the store what was the spam and rice combination it it was a fried spam eggs and rice and that was very common thing but they're like, yo, my mom, you know, she brought these over when they came back from the Philippines. And it's like, I'm like oh, okay, cool. She brought them over? Yeah. Well, they had to be bizarre. really good shape. She Those are probably them. really fresh. Yeah. They had them in like a cooler. And I'm like, okay, cool. It's like a Is that what they egg. call it now? <laughs> I think it's and, I think it's pronounced keister. Yeah, it's a little different. <laughs> That's how she got the eggs over. And uh, yeah, I tried. So I tried balut. I tried balut anyway. And it so was, wait, did, it was traumatizing for me. So they were like, "Hey, give this a whirl." They didn't you, tell me about it. You didn't know what it was. They did didn't you, tell me what it was until I already had it. I was eating it. Did you? Wait, just how did you not recognize the? I not recognize yeah, the, confused. The, the chicken or whatever the bird. Well, because I I didn't. It was the top of it open. The, the, right. the, it was like a duckly neck. I think it was. Okay. And Ooh, uh, that's a that the ducks are big eggs. It's a big egg, and yeah. it was like kind of it had like a brownish hue to it and yeah. stuff. And so they I'm don't like, okay. normally. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I thought I've seen like tea <laughs> eggs. You never yeah. seen like tea eggs and stuff. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, cool. And I bite into it. And there's a little bit of like chew and crunch and stuff. I'm like, what? Was and it I good? Looked, I looked down and I saw little like feathers and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Was it good? It, I was too trauma. I don't remember. 
Uh, I don't remember really? the taste why other does, than being horrified. Why does Balut sound like the name of a kid's show? That's because Baloo is the bear from it's, Jungle Book. It's Jungle Book Bear, you're right. That's what it is, because I'm just I'm looking around yeah. for like, you know, it's a... I've heard it pronounced Balut or Balot. It just depends yeah. on... I actually, I think it's uh, absolutely delicious. I, I, I totally enjoy it. I'd have it at any time. It's not weird to me. Okay. I have, when what I get... What do you do with the feathers? You spit them out? You just no, eat it. you eat them. And the bones, they crunch a little, but they're oh. so soft, and you can, you can eat no. them fine. It's, it is exactly, <laughs> like, as weird no, as You it, turn your head that way. He's <laughs> the one doing it. If you're going to... No, you have a white shirt. You're, you're going to get it. <laughs> as weird as it sounds, because I think it is weird for our culture, it 100% tastes like uh, scrambled eggs and chicken. Oh, his nightmare. Like, you lost me. It, <laughs> I was in until you said that. <laughs> it's not weird. It's not bad. The, the hot sauce, I've told this story a bunch, but the, uh, the guys who gave it to me said, you know, I took a bite of it, and I was like, that's not bad at all. I'm like, I think that's great. And they're like, cool, you want to add some hot sauce to it? And I, and I love hot sauce. And they poured on a bunch of this. It was an interesting, like, brownish-hued hot sauce. Hmm. And I ate it and was like, oh, my gosh, that stuff. It had a crazy harsh kick to it. It was different than any other hot sauce I've had. You know how most hot sauces have a vinegar base, and it's sure. really kind of harsh? No vinegar base. It wasn't it like was, mole or anything? No, no, no. Okay. It was, it was a, 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 a Southeast Asian thing. Oh, and okay. I, right, right, right. And I thought it was amazing. And I'm like, dude, that was so good. And I had more. And I finished the whole And you, you found know, out egg. they wrung it out of the dung. They yeah. wring it out of cow dung. They yep. take the Why juice Why did I know you were going to say that? Dung. I'm sorry. Juice I just knew you were going to say that. They do. It was, it was a group of, uh, it was a Hmong family. And he said, yeah, we all do this. And they take cow dung and they wring it out in a bucket. They said, go to any Hmong's home. And under their kitchen sink, most likely, there's a five-gallon pail with a towel draped over it. And it's fermenting cow dung. And they take it, they so bring it out. We're building all peppers. the characters from my kid's show. We have a partially developed duck. Yeah, that's we it. We have cow dungy. Cow dummy. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's in the show. Yeah. So th- this is going to be the top kid show of all yeah. time. The worst part I'm is not that doing I, the voice for it. the partially developed duck, though. I'm going to leave that. That's probably smart. Doing, That's probably I'm not going to try and guess the cast. It would be that. surprising. I'll tell you that <laughs> right now. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I was a little upset at how delicious I thought it was. But then I was like, I don't want to keep eating cow dung. Sure. That's weird. Yeah. But it's delicious. Hmm. Love it. Why is it like groups like that where their life expectancy is like 99? Well, just eat more yeah. cow dung. That's the secret. There is something to that. Don't develop, don't develop the ducks Yeah, and eat cow dung. Uh, oh, and spam. Uh, but yeah, well, I think spam probably shortens the lifespan a lot. You uh, balance it out with the kimchi. Spam and kimchi. Gosh. Kim- Kim- kimchi is delicious. I like but kimchi is better. Korean. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of other cultures have a style yeah. of kimchi, but I think it's kimchi specifically is yeah. Korean. I Delicious. love spam and kimchi. Oh, spam and kimchi. kimchi. Really? Oh, yeah. You've never had spam and kimchi? I don't think so. Oh, I mean, I, I have, but not terrible. at the same time. I love it. I am he does, very excited. Josh doesn't to have eat spam, spam and kimchi together. It's, it's a rule mm-hmm. for him. Yeah. Gross no. them out. Yeah. It's like chicken and eggs. Yeah, it's you bad. I, I could talk so about bad. eating weird things all day. So, what's another question? Well, the question here is <laughs> there's another one regarding cultural food of the U.S. So you're talking about cultural Filipino food okay. uh, or Southeastern uh, Asian food. So like, what would you consider is United States cultural food? So I have heard from a number of uh, like foreign exchange students and people from other countries that think it's funny how obsessed we are with sandwiches. Really? Yep. That's, the, that's, the, that's what they would say is quintessential American cuisine they, is a sandwich. They will say like, you know, we have sandwiches and we'll eat a sandwich, but but Americans are like we have a lot of sandwich chain restaurant things like Porta Subs, Subway, Jimmy John's, like places that like Jersey Mike's. Do you know why though? Right, we all know why. Th- they're delicious. No, they're they're cheap. They're poor man's sure. food. Filling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like it's just cheap that. Filling. So that sub when I was a kid was called a poor boy. Uh huh. Poor boy. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's just because it's it's a lot of bread. You know what I mean? Like the, I don't think they're realizing like it's it's probably more it's probably more. Financial than it is, anything but we've else. made them like delicious and amazing, like packed well, with meat and oh, cheese. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, but the sandwich, like, uh, what? Where are you going with this? What? Porta yeah. subs, like, it's like twenty bucks. Oh, oh yeah, no, they're not uh, cheap anymore. No, no, cheap anymore. It's, it's gone the other way now. I mean, I think like, Subway I think, you can still get five dollar sandwich. I mean, you can make a sandwich it, at home. Yeah. It's portable. And we're always on the go. The pace of life here is much faster. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. It's portable. <laughs> portable. Because we just said porta subs. Porta subs. Like, porta subs. Like, it's portable. portable. So 
That's not normally what I think about my sandwiches. Which is weird. What's good about the sandwich? It goes with me. Does no other? <laughs> does burgers not go with you? I no. Can carry it. I can't have burgers in my car. I never thought that porta subs could mean like a portable sub. <laughs> I didn't think so either. I don't know if it is, but it, it kind of like, works. Like a seaport. Yeah, because they definitely. Man, why do I need sandwiches at sea though? Or an airport? Why do I want to fly with sandwiches? Oh, because it's mm. portable. Oh, you know why it's a porta sub? You it's know why it is sea? Because it's a sub, like a submarine. Wait, we all knew that. Well, no, yeah. I'm saying the port part would make sense. Why? The... Yeah, no, that's why the restaurant did it. It's very sea themed. You know, it's funny is they don't have they don't no, sell any sea themed at all. Yeah, there's no sea. Actually, no, when I go no, to their the... logo, I think literally has either a porthole it or might... a. I think it is a port. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fine. I don't know why that one got me. I don't know that one got me. Oh, okay. I think oh, it is God. the little wow. circle with the, isn't it? The little. I think so. Circular keep, keep showing us what's what's the shit. <laughs> It actually yeah, what shape? What's just, do? What's it's the just shape? I don't know what I don't know it's what shape out. it could be. There's no. I don't know why that one got me more than any of them. <laughs> I mean, it just looks. It's just there's. It's just typed out. There's no. No, you're right, but I think they might have. A, you're, you're. That is. You're absolutely right. That has no theme whatsoever. I think in that picture. The first thought for me is like um, Cajun food. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Okay. Food. is American like Creole and Cajun food? No, but yeah. that that has a big French. It does. Yeah, it has a, it has no, a no, French. It has the influence. word Creole in it. I mean, yeah. like, but yeah, I will yeah, say, I point. will say that mix of everything right. is very much a Louisiana thing. Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay, yeah. what do you think, Floyd? What's what's a, what's what's American cuisine? I actually like looking that up when we're looking at like restaurants and places like this is American cuisine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, have I'm you ever like, been to an American restaurant in another country? Uh, I have not, but it sounds fantastic. No, I think. Uh, well, we've been to American restaurants, but not some place that says they have American cuisine. Were you with me in London when we went to the beach? We went to the the boardwalk in, gosh, South London. No, it must be with the, the kids. It, it might have been with the, with kids. the kids. But they, we went to an American diner in London, and I'm like, you guys are terrible at this. Well, the first time, they've, they've worked on their burgers. But they, their bur- they, have, they have helped. Their burger meat tastes weird, but the fact that the ham was bacon... And then now they have streaky yeah, bacon. They have streaky bacon. But they didn't yeah. have much streaky bacon. We were, the first time the we first went time, there, yeah. that was not common. A cheeseburger, I remember being like, what the hell is this piece of ham doing? Yeah, on it's, my, it's straight up ham. On my, on my bacon cheeseburger. Yeah. Hmm. I do think all those terms, too, because then we have like Canadian bacon, which is just the bacon in London. It, that's what they call bacon. It's, it's just, too many weird terms. It's so weird. Yeah. All right. So what, what do you think, Floyd? Yeah, I would, I would have to think. I, when I think of American food, I think of like dogs and burgers. Yeah. Stuff you get like at a ballpark. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. That'd, that'd be my thought. We do, uh, we do hot dogs better than anyone else in the world. And I get I think the Germans have like the, the brats and all that kind of stuff. Sure. But hot dogs specifically, because when you try and get a you hot dog in, in another London? country. You try to get a hot dog in London. It's vile. It's pasty on the inside. It's oh. like the, it's mash. It's a giant like Vienna sausage, and it's, it's soft. And oh, dude, it's horrific. It's so gross. Bang, I can't stand bangers it. Bangers are better. Yeah, bangers and so mash. Bre- oh, bangers and their, mash. Their, yeah. their breakfast sausage is more of a sausage consistency. Yeah. Mm. But, but their still, hot dog is mash. But it's still, gooey. I will say, still, still too weird. gooey for it's me. It's a little weird. It's more. It's like a gelatin type, like yeah. it's soft. Oh, dude, they don't do that. I'm stuff with well. Floyd. It's bur- it's burgers and hot dogs. Yeah. If you're saying like you want to get something American, it's a burger or a hot dog. That's I guess, and it, which is a kind of sandwich. I guess if we think about well, it. Well, yeah, and, and French fries are an American invention, right? But chips, no. It's, well, they have chips and. They have chips in England. Uh-huh. I don't know how long they've been there, but yeah, yeah. Um, those are chips, and they call our chips crisps. Well, yeah, I was gonna say uh, potato chips. I think are an American invention. Pota- American, potato they chip. are actually. Yeah. We read yeah. that. Are recently. they really? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were together. when We read the oh, history yeah, of chips. We were. Uh, so I, yeah, I'm sure I was there. I yeah, you don't remember these things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in French fries, uh, yeah, even there when we have chips there, they're they're fine. But it's not the same. No, I well, and I think that's and they're preference. like the same type. Whereas here, you can get twenty different types of French fries. Yeah, I I I prefer a very thin mm. French fry. Yeah. Theirs are all really thick steak fries that they don't cook much and they're right. very mushy. Called like what shoestring shoelace? Do, do, yeah, the shoestring fry. Do. I think it's super interesting that the European culture doesn't think they think dental work is vain. So I was always confused because I'm like, at this point, you're. It's like it's a, a totally, surgery. Yeah, they're a totally developed country. I was always interested as to why like dental hygiene didn't like cross over there, whereas it's so important in our country in the U.S. Like culture, teeth are so important. You want them straight and clean and white and all that, and it's very important here. And there, very wealthy, well-to-do people 
had teeth that I was like, that wouldn't fly in America. Like they're yeah. just, it, and they really explain and they go, no, that's, that's vain. It's like a nose job. It's like a facelift. Yeah. And I thought that's so interesting how the different weird. cultures view beauty. When you and I talked about this, when I was uh, a bellman at a hotel, we had the, we hosted the NFL symposium for rookies. Yes. I thought that and was one of the yeah. first oh, things that fun. they told me that the NFL would do for you is they fix your teeth. Because a person with healthy teeth is, tends to be a healthier person. Right. Yeah. Right. You tend to you eat, but be- everything's better. Like so, I'm yeah. thinking like even just medically, you think they'd fix their teeth yeah. because you tend to be healthier. Right. Isn't that but interesting? I, I think though that's newer information, right? Well, no. Yeah. When I had my I had jaw surgery back in 2013, uh, I had friends in college as well as like people from the churches that I was kind of church hopping and looking for people around my age and and common fellowship and. Somehow it would come up, you know, in conversation. <laughs> and it feels like you were forcing that into the conversation. Does. Where are you guys going for lunch? I had a <laughs> like, jaw surgery. Hey, well, <laughs> oh, hey, we have to watch what I eat because yeah. my jaw surgery. Like, oh, this. You guys want to hear yeah. about it? So here's how it happened. <laughs> you say that roller coaster was jaw dropping. <laughs> speaking, <laughs> oh, of which, speaking of jaws. Oh my gosh. But uh, I remember that there were some responses that people were like, "You really had that done?" I said, "Yeah." They're like, "You had reconstructive." You know, I'm like, "Yeah." Like, why? why oh, like to them it was why, this over the top. You seem upset about it. And they thought the same thing, that it was a, for vain reasons. And they were 100% right. And you had to... Ex- <laughs> Ryan, what was the name of that exactly. shark movie in the 70s? Really popular. They made like three or four of them. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, Terminator. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good, good movie. Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> the, the weird part that Josh isn't saying is that he didn't have a lower jaw. That's, that's the part. <laughs> they they literally that the whole thing was it reconstructed. Was a, that is all it was metal. Built one. It's yeah. all metal. They right started now. with Legos and then they moved up. That's right. <laughs> yeah, a Lego jaw. I like I like that idea. <laughs> I think that's actually a, a good point to end there. And thank you for joining us on You Won't Hate It. I'm Josh. I am Ryan. I'm Floyd. I'm Lisa. Oh, I thought you were going to go with Jaws or something. No, no, because her name, she was the name I could say. You know the She's guy. She's the Voldemort of my life. You know Jaws from. 007 yeah. is from Fresno. He's from Fresno. Yeah. yeah. Well, and he, no, he's not. What? He's not. He died. That he, doesn't mean he's not from here. He was from he, Fresno. No, he's still from here. I mean, he said the contraction. <laughs> Dead or alive, <laughs> he is from here. He uh, he went to church at a church that I used to work at. He did go so to that church. I, I, that. I would see him regularly, and I genuinely love that man. He is one of the kindest, was one of the most kindest, gentle guys, and he is, dang it. He was massive. Yeah. He was a giant of a man yep. and was so sweet. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard I really nothing but good him. things about that yeah. guy, honestly. He was so great. And you should have seen his jaw, Josh. Yeah. What? 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 I'm Lisa. <laughs>